What is up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. Coming at you with yet again another perfume experience Dubai to Roth. Okay, so this one you guys um, I blind bought it. It's the 100 ml because they were sold out of the 50 ml and I bought it because it's one of those perfumes that um, is hyped up it has been hyped up for about two years and according to Fragrantica, uh, trend-wise, it's still going strong in 2023. Today, I will be sharing with you my perfume experience of this. I will be going over this perfume with you guys. I will be going over the notes, which is an insane number of notes. I'll also be going over the description off of the website and then doing a perfume experience with you guys. But before we get started, and as per tradition on this channel, make sure to grab your favorite snack, your favorite bevy or cafe, and sit back and relax and enjoy the awesomeness heading your way. All right, so we're gonna get started with the unpackaging. So basically, I wanna show you guys what it arrives in. So you got this package right here, the front and the back, quite a bit of Arabic writing and English. And like I said, this is the 100 ml version because they're sold out of the 50. On the inside, once you open it, this is what you're getting. And there's a nice sort of fop plastic gold chain here. If I can get right there. Uh, there's a, you know, a little booklet that has a lot written in it and a slightly suede chamoise like material here holding it and then you get this plastic let me tell this a bit, plastic wrapper and then the bottle is sitting here on the inside and it's actually and you'll see that shortly it's, okay first of all so that's the seat of the bottle in there but guess what it also has its own plastic sleeve okay so it sits in there for protection now, I'm gonna be honest with you for the price point and this being uh, pushed as premium the plastic feels rather cheap and again you got this suede chamoise like material on the inside and then we pull the bottle out and this is what the bottle looks like. So this is the 100 ml. So you got here, uh, you know, a sailboat and palm trees, sand and some, what looks like Bedouin women. And you got, yeah, Bedouin women and men, tent, uh, castle, camels. And you got a crescent here. So the whole thing goes around so it is fabric it is uh, textured and uh on the top this is what the uh top looks like so you got this sort of uh, blue spirit of dubai i guess uh emblem with fa crystals and uh yeah and you've got some um sort of engravings here in the cover now i will profess to say this that again for a perfume that's luxury and high-end uh, to be very frank the bottle feels cheap uh, in terms of just some of the uh, a lot of the plastic use so you're gonna see plastic on the inside here and then the sprayer itself is plastic uh, the bottle glass itself uh, it's all right I mean it's just glass not crystal again for this price point I would have expected, you know, Crystal, uh, just going with some of the other Middle Eastern brands like ASQ or Ajmal that use Crystal bottles. Uh, even the artisanals like Arige Lador will use Crystal. But this, to me, is just cla uh, glass. So overall, the packaging, honestly, just <laughs> feels like there's a lot of it, but it's also... It doesn't really fit the uh, price point and the uh, branding of it being a luxury item. It just comes across as clumsy. 
Uh, so just something to keep in mind there. Okay. So that's for the unpackaging. All right, let's talk about the description. The description goes along these lines. As you travel across the land, its ancient culture seeps into you, enriching you with the poetic beauty of the Mu'alakat, the narrative splendor of the 1001 nights and the enchanting flavors of Arabian cuisine. The fragrance is the pristine essence of bergamot, rose, damaskine, jasmine, and vanilla, blended with the earthy flavors of patchouli and leather, enhanced with the mesmerizing scents of ambergris and smoky notes. So that's what they have there. And by the way, they describe, uh, that the brand is self-described as niche luxury, okay? Now brace yourself for the notes, because <laughs> this perfume has the most notes I've ever seen in any other perfume, okay? So for the top notes, you have apple, pineapple, strawberry, peach, coconut, blackcurrant, pink pepper, pepper, Nepal, bergamot, uh, bergamot, cumin, cinnamon, sweet orange, spicy notes, rose damaskine, cardamom, coffee, dried fruits, candied fruit. <laughs> Okay, that's just the top notes. The middle notes, you have jasmine, lily of the valley, iris, amorous, cedarwood, oud, coriander, violet, rose, saffron, cypriol, and sandal. And in the base notes, you have patchouli, sandalwood, guyacwood, vetiver, tolo balsam, piro balsam, leather, smoky notes, cystus, labdanum, incense, civet, white musk, ambergris, vanilla, moses, amber, and oak moss, okay? And they self-describe this within the olfactive family of woody, oriental, and spicy, okay? Now they do have a note here on the packaging, which I will read, and it's definitely gonna contradict what I just shared with you. The fragrance is presented in an exquisitely designed bottle, portraying the tapestry of tradition and crowned with an elegant bejeweled gold metallic cap, intricately embossed with the pattern logo of the House of Nabil. The bottle is housed in a pouch crafted from blue leather. Wait, that's leather? That is not leather, that is plastic. So see, already, um, now I don't know, maybe if they, Okay, yeah, this is plastic. This is not leather, you guys. The bottle is housed in a pouch crafted from blue leather, placed inside a blue leather box. Okay, so they're saying that this is leather. This does not feel like leather. This is black plastic, and it does have a rubbery feel to it, so maybe that's what they mean by leather. It simulates leather a bit, but this is not leather. Blue leather box showcasing a gold brushed frame. So this is sure. Okay, there's a frame here. It is more of a copper, but I guess it it, it leans towards gold rose, but it's not golden by any stretch of the imagination. Um, so yeah, just something to keep in mind. The other thing I just noticed on the package is that they sell these perfumes with an expiry date. So in the case of this one, it's December 2028, and this was manufactured in December 2023. So you're getting five years life out of this. Okay, so yeah, like I said, I, I mean, I already, I, and I didn't read the packaging description, to be honest, up until this moment, uh, not even during ordering, but yeah, so, the packaging info is definitely incorrect. Um, I mean, it is what it is, but yeah. And I'm gonna, so I might seem a bit harsh on this off of the get-go. And that's not because the perfume is necessarily bad, and I'll get into that shortly. But I'm a bit annoyed <laughs> at the other frack community influencers 
I don't consider myself an influencer, but for those that do out there, uh, they really, really hyped this up a lot. And as of late, a lot of my purchases are based on these hyped up uh, perfumes and scents, which I will not do again, <laughs> I'll profess that. Uh, but yeah, it just, it, it, it's disappointing because you watch a lot of these influencers, quote unquote, uh, to make informed decisions when it comes to getting into a scent. And everything being equal, citrus, paribus, as we're saying, economics, um, and that's controlling for subjectivity and taste of perfumes. I would say that there's a lack of honesty. Now, I don't know if it's because they have a brand deal and they're just not disclosing it, or because you know it's just a, new, a relatively new offering and they just jumped on it to set their content apart whatever the case may be again this one is very very hyped and uh yeah i, I i'd say one thing i'm learning uh as of recent is that if something is overly hyped <laughs> probably double think your decision when it comes to acquiring it but with that said, like I said, I just want it, and I'll get into that shortly, but yeah, I'm a bit <laughs> um, annoyed, let's put it that way. And it's not necessarily a reflection of the perfume or the house, it's just, yeah, there's, there's a lot of misleading information online. Surprise, surprise, we live in the age of um, misinformation. So, let's get started. And uh, one thing I wanna highlight is that this, and maybe you guys will be able to see this. While it is an alcohol-based scent, you can tell there's quite a bit of oils in there because there are bubbles in it that float upwards and they're so slow to move upwards. So there's a lot of essential oils. Um, and again, it's a really nice scent, not to take away from it at all. But I have my reservations, which I will highlight shortly. Okay. So let's start with the perfume experience. All right, so the sprayer is generous, but it, it's kind of like a leaky water hose rather than a sprayer. So it doesn't really perform that great in terms of pushing out the uh, liquid. And that doesn't surprise me given the plastic uh, composition. But here is the spray uh, print and this was one spray all the way down so it is pretty generous you're gonna get quite a print out there even though the liquid is yellowish it's actually pretty clear on my skin however there is quite a bit of an oil residue here so just something to be cognizant of is that this is full of oils and with that said i can actually see already that my skin is really absorbing it so again this is the first time i sprayed on my skin and we'll see over time how it develops, but it, it is leaving an oil residue there even with the absorption, okay? Now, so, one thing I will bring up right away is that there is so much going on in here that you're not picking on much. Uh, it's just, it, it's the, the notes are going in and out, in and out. There's so much notes going on at the same time and it gets so overwhelming that you become nose blind to it very quickly. And that's one thing I noticed with the scent and I did see others in particular on forums like Fragrantica comment on that and I do agree with that I think they put so much in this <laughs> that it, it just it became counterproductive to the scent it's um, it has so much good in it but the, the 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 sum of the whole of all of that good actually retracted back from the perfume I would say uh, so just something to keep in mind, your nose goes blind to it very quickly and the, it's this, the scents 
notes keep fluctuating so quickly that you don't get it the time or a moment to actually detect or appreciate the note shifts so that's something to keep in mind with that scent and it happens so fast if it was to happen slowly and gradually over time it's tolerable because then you have something to look forward to but with this the shifts are so quick between the notes that you don't have time to pick on what note is projecting or performing at a certain moment it's first of all i'm not gonna get into the notes because there's so many of them and it's gonna be really hard <laughs> to pick one by one and this upload is gonna be very long otherwise but uh the other thing about this perfume which is really confusing to me it comes across as both expensive and cheap at the same time <laughs> i've never smelled anything like this it smells expensive in the sense of the typical innocency oudi resinous sense and then it comes across as like a cheap britney spears that's overly fruity overly musky and it's just such a it messes with your head because you can't tell if this is uh an elegant composition or a cheap composition now the the predominant note profile i'm getting is that i'm getting um a fruity cocktail like a juice cocktail that's passion fruit dominant note profile in here i am getting a bit of incense and leather i am getting smokiness and resins in here Now, my understanding is that this was supposed to have Indian oud in it because I've seen some of the reviews and comments saying that it turns um, a bit nasty. And I am not picking on any of that. And actually, you know what? I don't even see any mention of oud in the notes. That is very fascinating because... Actually, no, there is. In the middle note, there is oud. Okay. But... I don't get any fecal, any um, sort of bad skanky oud in here. And just like that, I cannot smell anything. It's, it becomes a skin scent very quickly. It has also, you definitely get the resins in here. There's, there, there's also slight powderiness, uh, powdery facets to this. But it's fruity, smoky, Resinous, I'm starting to get a bit of the wood. And my skin is just ate it up so quick. Now, man, this is tough. Because I want to do it justice. It's not that it's bad, it's just overhyped, which are two very different things, okay? Okay, so for those of you that have traveled to the Middle East or you have lived in the Middle East, you most likely smelt a lot of perfume DNA like this, where it's gonna be incensey and overly fruity sweet, uh, predominantly worn by Middle Eastern women in places in particular like uh, the United Arab Emirates or Kuwait. Uh, and the only reason I reference these is because I've had consulting gigs back in the day out there and you're gonna smell the DNA of this around everywhere okay and for the most part it's actually 
I really do like the, f the fruit notes here. It's when I managed to pick it, this is what I'm saying. It just switches over and over so quickly between the notes. It, it's frustrating. Anyways, I digress. Uh, so you'll smell this. It's not something per se that is new. It, this DNA has existed for a very long time in the Middle East. Um, now, uh, do I agree with this being, um, and, and I'll get into specific performance info shortly, but do I agree with the marketing on this be, be, being niche and luxury? I respectfully disagree, okay? Uh, I paid quite a bit for this, like a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I'm having buyer's remorse to a certain extent. Um, and you could have gotten this exact DNA for about $20 at a much more beast performance. Um, so I, I find there's, you know, this is why I'm saying I'm frustrated with the hype around this. Uh, not that it's bad, it's just that a lot of the hype make it seem like it's unworldly, which is not the case. Yeah, it, it just switches so quickly. I can't even pick on anything other than the fruit and, and resinous smoky notes. Okay, so let's get talking about uh, performance. So right now, this has become a skin scent, okay? Remember that this is an uh, Odeur de Parfum, uh, so it should be quite heavy performance-wise. And uh, yeah, it's, at this point, it's just become a skin scent. Uh, performance-wise, I'm gonna go ahead and say that it is weak on my skin, remember that, okay? Uh, so I'm not gonna have much projection trailer silage with this. In the morning when I did apply it, I actually sprayed a lot of it on my clothing also, not just my skin, and I could barely smell it, okay? So even on fabric, uh, so leaving my skin out of the uh, equation, I had a hard time, you know, smelling it. So it's, it's yeah, it's, again, it could be a factor of a few things, the notes switching up so quickly that I've become nose blind to it very quickly, or it's just, you know, going by itch right now is just weak performance, okay? I'm not getting much out of it. Uh, with respect to uh, seasonality, when would you wear this? I mean, I'm gonna go ahead and say that this is versatile enough to wear across all four seasons. It's not too resin heavy, it's not too oud heavy, it's not overly smoky. It's very well balanced across the board. Uh, so you can actually wear it across the seasons without suffocating yourself and still getting to enjoy it. With respect to time of day, uh, I'm going to go ahead and say just because of the fruity, smoky, resinous profile of this, it's definitely evening wear. You can't wear this in the morning. It's just, even though performance wise, it doesn't do that well, it's just it's gonna be overkill in the morning. You don't wanna smell that in the morning. Unless fruity, smoky scents are your thing early in the morning. So yeah, so evening wear for sure. With respect to how you would dress this, the, the, I, I wanna say formal, but the fruity notes in here do not say formal. So it's gonna be semi-formal, semi-casual, because also if you wear it overly casual, it's not gonna be congruent. So you think semi-formal, semi-casual. With, uh, with respect to the gender spectrum, this is unisex, so they do advertise it as unisex, and I do agree with that. I just find because the uh, fruit note profile here is dominant that and is more feminine leaning. I just think of this more as a, you know, feminine leaning scent, but it will work as unisex. So for the sake of argument, we're gonna say unisex, but 
with a feminine leaning bias, okay? With respect to context, um, where would you wear this? So I'm not gonna imagine a context. I'll give you a real life example where I've smelled this on people. So I've smelled this on, uh, not this exact scent, but similar, similar DNA. So I've smelled this DNA on uh, women in the Middle East and the Gulf countries, typically in the malls, okay? So if you go to an indoor mall like the Dubai mall and you walk by people, a lot of them are gonna smell like this. You have uh, outdoor open air malls in other countries like Bahrain or Kuwait, where they you're actually in the evening, you're gonna smell this scent profile on people also. So. A lot of my association with a scent profile like this is people going shopping, okay? So this would be a perfect scent to put on as you head out to the mall and you're going shopping or you're going to a coffee shop in the mall. And a lot of the activities uh, in the Middle East, mind you, take place indoors because it gets up to 60 degrees Celsius. Uh, not Fahrenheit, Celsius <laughs> in the summer. So you need air conditioned spaces and that's why uh, I'll predominantly uh, would have smelt it in indoor areas like the malls is because that's the only place you can really be to do anything in these temperatures. So context wise, you're going out shopping, you're going out catching up with friends, you're just chilling, taking it easy. Uh, this by no stretch of the imagination is super instancy or Uji where it comes across as a status based perfume. It has some of that in here, but it's very balanced across the board. I mean, this perfume is trying to play all the cards in one perfume. It's trying to come across as uh, fun, easygoing, exotic, uh, powerful, you know, uh, status-oriented, regal. It's just trying to do so much in one perfume profile that I think while they do have a nice perfume, again, the scent profile is great. There's nothing wrong with it. I just think that at some point you hit this point of diminishing returns where actually they did, my bad, the camera stopped recording. So I think they did so much here that they hit the point of diminishing returns and it took away from the perfume rather than added. With that said then, would I recommend the spirit of Dubai to Roth? <sighs> okay, let me put it this way. If you are new to Middle Eastern perfumes and you want a perfume that offers you different scent, no profiles that shift and change quickly. Something that isn't overwhelming, something that would invite people into your bubble to smell, and something that is distinctive from other offerings of the same DNA, uh, just because of the price point or the marketing behind it, then 100% yes, get your nose on it, get your wallet on it, cop it. Uh, you will not regret it. Uh, you can actually get samplers off of the website so you don't even have to commit to a full bottle. With that said, I would still recommend you buy it if you fit that sort of profile uh, of a customer. However, if you on the other hand, you're somebody who's an oud head, somebody who's more, um, tenured in Middle Eastern perfumery, exposed to quite a bit of the artisanal or the traditional Middle Eastern perfumery, you're gonna find this underwhelming and you're gonna be disappointed with it. So, to wrap this up, I'm gonna go ahead and say that, um, yeah, I do recommend this if you're a newbie into Middle Eastern perfumery uh, and ouds. Uh, but I don't recommend it for those of you that are seasoned and that have a mature nose. And uh, yeah, I'll just wrap it up here, you guys. As per usual, very much appreciate your time and attention, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.